So what is infrastructure as a code? I see, and why use it? So the infrastructure management technology promises to transform the way you manage IT infrastructure. But many today are not really seeing any dramatic differences, and some are finding that these only make life messy. As you'll see, that infrastructure as a code is an approach that provides principles, practices, and patterns for using these technologies effectively. So remember, there's an Iron Age and there's a Cloud Age. The Iron Age of IT systems were directly talking about physical hardware. Provisioning and maintaining infrastructure was manual work, forcing you know, us to point and clicking and trying to keep the gears turning. Because changes involve so much work, change management processes emphasized you know, another approach in consideration design and other review work. So this made sense because getting it wrong was very expensive. The cloud age of IT, on the other hand, systems have been decoupled from physical hardware. Routine provisioning and maintenance can be now delegated through software systems, freeing up your valuable time. Changes can be time in minutes, if not seconds. So change management can really exploit this particular aspect, right? And provide reliability, faster time to market. Infrastructure as a code is an approach to automation based on practices of software development. It emphasizes consistent, repeatable routines for provisioning and changing systems and their configuration. So changes are made in definitions, right? Few lines of code unintended processes through validation, for example. The premise is that modern tooling can take the infrastructure as if it was software and data. And this allows people or software development tools such as version control systems, VCS, for example, automated testing libraries, and other deployment orchestration infrastructure. It also opens doors to exploit development practices such as test-driven development practices called TDD, continuous integration, CI and continuous delivery, CD. In other words, for instance, infrastructure as a code, right, IAC, is the management of infrastructure, you know, and works over virtual machines, load balancers, connection topology in a descriptive model, using the same versioning as DevOps teams uses as for source code. So like the principle, as the same source code generates the same binary, IAC model generates the same environment every single time it is applied. So it is a key DevOps practice in conjunction with continuous delivery. Infrastructure as a code evolved itself to solve the problem in releasing code within pipelines. So teams must maintain individual deployment environments. Over time, each environment becomes a snowflake, right? That is a unique configuration that cannot be reproduced automatically. So inconsistency among environment leads to issues during deployments. So with these kind of snowflakes, the administration, for example, you know, manual processes is really hard to track and really contribute to lots of errors. So the principles of infrastructure as a code, right? It really is a property that always sets the target environment into the same configuration file, regardless of the environment starting state. It is really achieved by automatically configuring, right, the resources or by discarding resources and adding resources to the same file. IAC you know, the team makes changes to the environment, provides a few lines of code, adds resources or destroys resources within the same file. And the release pipeline executes the model to, you know, model target environments. If the team needs to make changes, they edit the source, not the target. So infrastructure as a code enables DevOps teams to test applications as well in production-like environments or within the development lifecycle. And these teams expect to provision multiple, you know, areas or multiple divisions like staging environment, dev environment, and you know production environments and test common deployment issues. At the same time the cloud dynamically provisions you know down the environment to the ISC definitions. So what it can deliver a stable environment right rapidly and at scale. And teams avoid manual configuration of environments and force consistency by representing the desired state. So infrastructure deployment with this methodology, right, prevent runtime issues, right, or missing dependencies. DevOps teams can now work together with a unified set of practices and tools to deliver application and supporting infrastructure very, very quickly, reliably, and at scale. It really starts by looking at how infrastructure traditionally manages versus how automation can benefit.
And in the past, it was a really difficult task, right? The admins had to really manually configure all the hardware and software that is needed for the applications to run. However, in recent years, things have changed, right, dramatically. Trends like cloud computing revolutionize the way organizations design, develop, and maintain their IT infrastructure. So one of the critical components of this trend is called infrastructure as a code. And that's really what we're going to talk about and see the real benefit. The traditional infrastructure, say VMware running in a traditional data center, right? The classic approach was the consumer of the infrastructure, you know, would issue a ticket, right? And someone on the other end on the ticketing queue is pulling, logging it into a management portal, and then the admin council, for example, and then pointing and clicking the provisioning of that infrastructure. It was okay if I, you know, if you didn't have a lot of hardware to work with. If you have a large enterprise setup, right? For example, many data centers, a VM will actually take months to years, right? So to solve this real problem and issue is is the key benefit of infrastructure as a code. So take a look at the issues at managing IT infrastructure, for example. Okay, historically, managing IT infrastructure was a manual process, like I mentioned earlier. People would physically put servers in place and configure them. Only after the machines were configured to the correct setting required by the operating system and the people deploying the application. Unsurprisingly, this manual process often results in several problems. And I've talked about this earlier as well, right? First problem is cost. You have to hire many professionals to perform necessary steps and tasks for hardware, from network engineers to maintenance technicians, and so on. So all of those people need to be paid. Obviously, money goes away, right? And they need to be managed as well. And of course, that leads to more management overhead and more complex environment as you progress forward. So money goes away, right? And, you know, we didn't even really mentioned talking about maintenance costs of data centers, the electricity costs, and so on. So the next big problem are scalability and availability as well. But in the end, it all comes down to speed and delivery. Since manual configuration is really slow, applications would really struggle, you know, to perform and deliver its real value, right? And you're desperately trying to set up servers because of the scalability that impacts the availability and scalability and reliability of the application right then you need backup servers and so on so it's really a complex environment but not least on list of problems comes in inconsistency and that's a real issue okay in the real world scenario deploying configurations because the configurations do not match you know every engineer is working on his own set of you know configuration parameters and once changes are made, it's really difficult to put everything together. The cloud, on the other hand, right, is API driven. So that's one big change and that's fantastic because there's much higher elasticity of infrastructure now where instead of months to years, it's now just days to weeks and maybe sometimes minutes to spin up a resource. So the scale of infrastructure is, is really much higher because instead of handful of large instances, you might have many smaller instances, right? So there are many more things that you need to provision. And this infrastructure tends to recycle itself. You might scale up to handle a load during peak day and then scale down at nighttime to save on costs because that's really, you know, is, is, is the benefit of the cloud, okay? And then of course you can depreciate and you're not paying by the months, you're paying by the hour using those resources. So you must have this elasticity, right? The real idea behind infrastructure as a code is how do you take the process in some sense, things that you were pointing and clicking to achieve in the past, and how do you capture this and automate using the IAC? So if you need to do something one time or 10 times or a thousand times, you can automate the entire process. So every morning you can you know, run a script that can spin up a thousand machines, for example, okay? And the same script, you can bring it back down to the same size. So basically, going back to the core definition of IAC, which means to manage your IT infrastructure using configuration files. So the key takeaway from this definition is, before, you know, before IAC, IT personnel, for example, had to manually configure and change, right, all these resources. Maybe they would use, you know, a throwaway scripts to automate certain tasks, but that was the extent of it, okay? With IAC, your infrastructure configuration takes a form of a code file. Since it's just text, right, just a bunch of lines of code, 
you can copy it, distribute it, work with teams, and you can put it under source control, for example, right? Version control. That's the real power. So the benefits of the infrastructure as a code, the issues and problem caused by manual approaches to the infrastructure managed, right? I've already mentioned how cloud computing is the solution to some of those problems and how infrastructure as code can solve these pain points. Let's examine a few core benefits of infrastructure as a code. First, the speed. Okay? IAC enables you to quickly set up your complete infrastructure by running a script. You can do that for every single environment from development to production, passing through staging, QA, and more. IAC can make the entire software development lifecycle more efficient. Second benefit is consistency. You know, newer processes result in mistakes, and that makes sense. And we all make mistakes, right? Our memory befall us, right? Communication is sometimes difficult, and you're in general you know, pretty bad shape sometimes, right? Because of the manual work. And this is really the result of you know, discrepancies that you find with manual work. Infrastructure as a code solves this problem, right? So you'll have a single source of truth, you have a single file that manages the entire infrastructure. Okay, and you can deploy over and over again without any discrepancy. So accountability as a benefit, for example, right? The accountability is really, you know, is, is a key also because then you can know exactly where the file is. You have full traceability of all the changes of the configurations because you're using version control. And there's no guessing game of who did what because you have feature branches, right? Everyone is committing code to a certain branch. And that's the benefit, right? So by employing or deploying infrastructure as a code, you can really take your architecture in different stages. And that makes the whole software development lifecycle more and more efficient, right? Raising the team's productivity to new and higher levels. Programmers are using ISC to create and launch, you know, different environments, allowing them to develop in isolation safely. The same would be true for QA as well. They have perfect copies of the production environments in which to run their tests. So, when it's deployment time, you can push both infrastructure, the code to production in one single step. Really becomes a value. It's really the reusability of code. And we'll take a look at how Terraform uses modules. Just wanted to cover what really infrastructure of the code is. A little bit of history, background, so you really understand how it works, how the automation actually helps us moving from, you know, let's say the manual processes towards real automation inclusive of DevOps practices. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. I'll be glad to help with this. Let's move to the next lesson.